Hey everybody, Lord Tremendous here, and I got another battle report here for you. Battle report number 63, Tazai, Lord Tremendous of the Ogre Cons, versus Sex Panther, once again, of the Demon Legion. Uh, this is a new list of his, uh, he promised me a new list, and this man delivered. Uh, I have a slightly changed up list, not huge, but enough, and it is officially the list I'm taking to Adepticon. So for all of you Grand Tournament guys that are actually worried about me, you have set your sights low, let me tell you. <laughs> But if you're curious to see what I'm taking to Adepticon, this is it. This is the debut of that list. It is final, it is submitted, and it is as good as it's going to get. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to see how this one goes. Here's my list, and like I said, this is the list. This is the one! I've got my Khan, Blackshade. He's my general. I gave him an Ogre Crossbow. I gave him the Kingslayer. I, I like the sword. I like the idea. Is it smart? No, but I like it. I gave him the Hardened Shield, the Talisman of Shielding, and Horde Master. He's a 2-up, 6-up, and for every character in base-to-base -base with him or his unit, he gets plus 1 strength, plus 1 attack. I like the kit. He's just there, so I have a general and a little extra punch uh, in the good old boy unit. I like him. I like him, and he's going to stay that way. And uh, there's nothing I can do to change until after the Adepticon. So there he is. Next up, I have my Khan. He's still my BSB. He now has an Ogre Crossbow as well. He's got the Heart Ripper, Yeti Furs, and Troll Eater. He hits a 4-up, four 4-up. Four uh, he's got a little pew-pew. And with the Heart Ripper, he's a Face Melter. Yeti Furs is cool. Gives him a little bit extra uh, armor. But it also gives him, you know, the ability to lower your initiative. And with Rufus, sometimes I can get you at negative 4 initiative, which means elves go slow. And God knows I love killing elves. Oh, yeah. And then I have my Shaman Skaz. He's got three learn spells. He's got the Dragonfire Gem. And he's using Thaumaturgy because I wanted a more aggressive Skaz. And a more aggressive Skaz has actually worked out quite nice for me. Wait till you see what happens in this one. And of course, I have my Mammoth Hunter, Lord Tremendous. He also has an Ogre Crossbow, uh, the Obsidian Blade, Armor Fortune, Headhunter, and the Tusker War Teddy. Uh, yeah, just like this kit, the Obsidian Blade makes him a lot more useful, and uh, it was a smart kit. I, I did lose the Iraq Charm. Uh, nobody really shoots at him anymore. With two monsters on the table, he's not as uh, singular of a threat as he used to be, so I don't seem to need it as much. We'll see. It'll probably bite me in the ass, but right now, I'm happy with the kits. Starting off my core choices, I have my first unit of seven tribesmen, the good old boys. They have a banner, musician, iron fist, and the banner of discipline. This is where uh, Black Shade goes. And I have my second unit of seven tribesmen, the conquerors. They've got a banner, musician, and iron fists. I'd give a magic banner, but that's illegal. And then I have my unit of 15 Scraplings, the Randos. All they have is bows. That's it, and they're surprisingly effective. <laughs> I like these little guys. Starting off my special choices, I have a unit of 5 Scrappling Trappers, the favored pets. I have a single Sabertooth Tiger, Bow Wowzer. And I have my unit of three Tusker Cavalry with uh, Banner, Great Weapons, and the War Standard. And these are the actual models. These are my models. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm very pleased with what my buddy did to paint these guys. They look amazing. And uh, they're hit or miss, and I think that's more me than anything else. But when they are, when they do hit, they, they, they hit really good. And when, when they miss, they miss really good. So, <laughs> I think that's more me than anything else. And I'm working on that. And now I have in the powder kegs category three bombardiers. They're butt naked, but I wanted to try something other than a scratapult, which misfires, and a cannon, which I just can't afford to put into the list. I don't have the points. Uh, I have these models. My buddy painted up gorgeously, and it's it felt like a waste to not use them, so I'm using them. And uh, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any spoilers or anything like that. You'll see what happens in the games. In my Chain Beast section, I start off with my Frost Mammoth, Rufus! The guys he totes around have a couple of Ogre Crossbows, but I absolutely love this guy. Some have told me to remove him from the list, those people are wrong. But it's okay to be wrong, I am all the time, and uh, I'm still kicking. So, yeah, yeah, bad wrong people. 
And then of course I have my rock a rock elf eater, which is amazing, but not half as amazing as the rider with lance that mounts him, Shyhammer. And that may sound a little funny the way I worded it, but damn it, I'm going with it. <laughs> You know what, I should have named the Rocker Rock Faust. Oh well, Elf Eater will do. That's gonna do it for my list. I'm gonna go ahead and post my opponent's list, uh, play some music, feel free to pause it whenever you'd like to see what he took. Here are my spells. I still don't have any cards printed out, uh, mostly because I'm lazy, but the paper works for now. Uh, I got Hand of Heaven, Smite the Unbeliever, and Wrath of God. Three good spells out of this one, so you'll see how they do. As you saw, my opponent has a Harbinger of Change, I believe, and uh, with one spell from Thaumaturgy, and he ended up getting Trial of Faith on that guy. And then on his Greater Demon, he got Fate's Judgment, Know Thy Enemy, Unerring Strike, and Portent of Doom out of Divination. And all of those are terrifying. Divination is one of the scarier paths, in my opinion. Here's Deployment, and I got the place first, so I just threw everything down. I knew what I was going to do, and uh, I went with it. Basically, Elf Eater's on the left flank there. That stone thing with my little counter on it near my dice, that's impassable, so I pretty much ignored the left side. And I threw Elf Eater down there because he could either go through the choke point between the trees and the ruins or the hill and the trees, depending on what he needs to do. He's, he's got a decent charge range. He's got swift stride. He's not going anywhere. Uh, so I like him there. I have the, what's it called? Scraplings in the water feature there in the middle. I figured they could use a bath, and anything that gets close enough for them to shoot at is good enough. I don't plan on marching with these guys, and a water feature will stop me from doing that, allowing them to continue to shoot, which is really what they're there for. Uh, then I've got the good old boys, and the I'm sorry, I've got the Conquerors. Uh, right next to them is the Bombardiers with Rufus and Skaz behind them. The idea here is Rufus is going to try to lower the initiative of anything that comes in them. I didn't want to go up front because I wasn't sure if my opponent had shooting or anything like that that could take out Rufus. Uh, he does have shooting in this list, so I have to be careful. Uh, I've got Bow Wowser in between the Bombardiers and the good old boys just to redirect anything that I need to. Maybe give a sweet flank charge for either my uh, Tusker Cav or Lord Tremendous, which are on the right. And, of course, I have my trappers in the forest on the far right there they're going to harass the flamers the best they can uh probably i'll get killed probably burned out of that forest before turn two but they're there and it's better i lose them than like a tusker cav or even a good old boy but yes that's it for deployment here's top of one after movement and like i said i got to go first or i got to deploy first so i went first and i come forward gingerly you know i'm not i'm not too eager but i'm not exactly under eager he doesn't have a whole lot of close combat things i don't think uh, a lot of the stuff i'm not overly familiar with he does have his slaughterers but then he's got that weird lust chariot that i'm not exactly sure what it does he's got some horrors there he's got the uh, pestilent beasts i know those are dangerous and i don't have any real flaming attacks in this unit and then he's got his little flamer guys i'm not worried about them i'm sending tremendous up there to go and deal with the little flamer guys i've got my tusker Cav and the good old boys trying to draw out his uh, pestilent beasts. I don't think the horrors are coming forward, but just in case, I have Bow Wowser behind the hill ready to redirect whatever comes, including that crazy gnarly chariot. Uh, I bring the conquerors and the bombardiers up to just. I'm trying to bait out either the chariot or the slaughterers. If I can get his uh, slaughterers in the forest, they wouldn't be steadfast, and that would be great. 
Uh, the bombardiers are just going to shoot at the chariot because I don't know what it does, but I know whatever it does, it probably does a lot of it during impact hits. It looks like it. So the bombardiers and Rufus are going to shoot at them. I've got Skaz looking right down that gap between the bombardiers and the conquerors to shoot at the uh, lust chariot up top there with magic. I'm going to try to get rid of that. Uh, after doing some quick measurements, I realized that the scraplings, they weren't going to be able to shoot at anything, even if I moved them forward four inches, so they stayed put. And Elf Eater came forward seven inches because I want him to deal with those uh, flying little death trap uh, things as quick as possible. Uh, I moved him up just enough that he wouldn't be able to hit them and do their little bomb dropping thing, but at the same time, if he gets too close to Elf Eater with those guys, he's going to destroy them. And that's it for movement. Magic phase, I immediately try and accomplish getting off the Wrath of Gods. I put it right there in front of the Lust Chariot. And again, the idea is if you come forward, you're going to get blasted. If you stay where you're at, you're going to get blasted. I'm trying to find that sweet spot that's going to force him to move, but move in such a way that it's not beneficial for him. I'm trying to mess up his movement phase. Not so much do damage. Any damage I do is just a bonus. Really, what I like about the Wrath of the Gods is its ability to affect my opponent's movement. The threat is real, and I like that. Unfortunately, in order to get that spell off, I miscast 10. Not the greatest way in the world to start off, but a miscast 10, I'm going to end up taking 4. I think it was only with 3 dice, I'm not 100% on that, but I think it was 3 dice. And uh, so I'm only going to take like some strength 3 hits, he's toughness 5, I'm probably not going to take any damage, but a miscast always hurts my ego. And I've got a frail ego, what can I tell you? When it's all said and done, I mean, Skaz doesn't have any defense against non-flaming attacks, so he takes a wound, and... Uh, well, I mean, to get the Wrath of God down, eating a wound isn't terrible, but it's not great. But, you know, who am I to complain? I did it. I have to accept it. I'll, I'll have to eat the wound. During the shooting phase, uh, Rufus, I, I kind of take a pot shot at his caster. And I hit and I wound, so I'm very pleased about that. He's only got two left, which is good, because a dead enemy caster is a safe enemy caster. And then the Bombardiers, shockingly, uh, fire, well, I guess shockingly isn't the right word, but they uh, shoot at the Lust Chariot and are able to get two wounds through on him. I was very surprised and very pleased at their damage output. So maybe there's hope for those guys after all? We'll see. They've let me down before. With no combat, we go over here to bottom of one after movement, and there's significant movement. Uh, my opponent comes forward. He kind of throws all caution to the wind about the Wrath of the Gods. The slaughters do go into the forest, but not enough for me to slam in there and not be uh, disrupted by the forest as well. His chariot comes up. His caster goes behind the hill. The horrors back up on the hill. Uh, the Pestilent Beast come forward just a little bit, and the Screamers and the Greater Demon come towards Elf Eater to kill him. Other th uh, his, his little flamer guys on the right flank, they didn't move at all, and really, that's it for movement. You know, now that I think about it, I think, yeah, this is a picture of it right here. I believe either his chariot, maybe his chariot and his slaughters tried to charge the conquerors. He needed a long-distance charge to do it, and he didn't. Maybe that's why they moved up in that way. That looks right. There are little charge markers on there, so I'm going to say that's what happened, but uh, obviously he didn't make it, which is good for me. During the magic phase, uh, his greater demon gets that divination spell off, either test of faith or uh, the other one, unerring something or other. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, ends up doing three wounds to Elf Eater with those spells. And that sucks. He's half dead. He's got a beautiful charge against the little flying bastards. I even contemplated charging him into the greater demon with 3d3 strength 7 hits. I mean, I need 3s to wound this thing. It might be worth it. But then again, taking out those flying bastards is a guarantee while just doing a little bit of damage to his greater demon. I mean, we've all seen, seen Sex Panther's ward save. So if I only did one wound to give up my, my elf eater with... Uh, so that really kind of kind of cripples him a little bit, but, well, we'll see. We'll see what I do. I know. You're about to find out. There's nothing happening in the shooting. There is no combat, so we go over here to top of two after movement. And the only charge that I effectively make, well, the only charge that I, that I declare is Elf Eater into those flying things. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, the idea here is clear them out. Hit them, destroy them. I know I have to overrun. I know it's bait. But Elf Eater's got three wounds on him. He's probably not going to survive another magic phase. So I might as well take one of my opponent's units out before he takes out mine. Yes, he's getting a better deal. And uh, 
it was a gamble. It was a gamble putting them out there, and uh, I lost this one. What can you do? Other than that, the rest of my army mostly stays put. Lord Tremendous moves slightly to the left because I don't know where the uh, Pestilent Beasts are going to go. And that's that's it, really. I mean, everything else stays put. Uh, the Scraplings move up just slightly so they can shoot at the Slaughterers. And, uh, that, yeah, nothing nothing extreme in this move, movement phase other than Elf Eater's Charge because I'm being a little cautious. We'll see if that's a good idea or not. There's a better picture of Elf Eater and Shyhammer doing their Frank the Tank impersonation. During a magic phase, I get a spell off on his chariot, which does all the wounds, killing it dead. Yes, Skaz with a gun <laughs> is, uh, is, is quite enjoyable. Damn these augments, he needed offensive spells. And now that he has them, he's enjoying them. So yes, the scary lust chariot dies before it can do anything, which is huge. Because I'm willing to bet, had it been able to charge me, it would have been devastating. Nothing else goes off. Magic phase ends. The wrath of the gods arrives. As you can see, it blows his caster to smithereens. It takes out four horrors and about six uh, slaughters. Five or six slaughters. Oh, the glory of the wrath. <laughs> I like that spell. I, I really do. I wish I could cast it twice in a turn. During the shooting phase, I believe the Traplings are able to slip one wound through on the Pestilent Beasts, which is always good. And then Lord Tremendous takes a pot shot at him and slips another wound through, which, again, is always good. We go into combat, and Elf Eater, Shy Hammer, they destroy two of the little guys, the Flyers, uh, put a wound on the Survivor, but uh, they don't, I don't think they take anything in return. My opponent rolls his Crumble check, his instability or whatever. And he turns into dust. The resulting overrun puts me right there in perfect charge range of his slaughterers. I know Elf Eater's dead. Maybe he could take some of the slaughters out with him. If not, well, at least he got a, a, a unit's worth of points before he went down. I did what I could. So here we are in bottom of two after all that. And yeah, the slaughters went into Elf Eater and Shy Hammer like we knew they would. Uh, but that's it. Uh, nothing else either charged or made their charge. His Greater Demon comes running over to harass my flank, which was smart. I thought he might go into uh, Elf Eater just to secure the kill. However, he didn't. Uh, he ran over there to fire off some shots at Rufus, probably. And I get that. I know he likes to kill my monsters. It's kind of mean, but it's also kind of smart. Uh, his Pestilent Beasts move up, as well as his uh, Flamers, and that's... Well, his Horrors move up as well, but not very far. They're kind of in the valley between the two hills there. I can't see him. He can't see me. It is what it is. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got planned for the rest of this turn, because that's it for movement. There's a better picture of a Slaughter slamming in the Elf Eater, and that's going to be bad. During the magic phase, uh, he gets that spell off where it's like you both roll off and whatever the difference is, that's how many wounds you take. Well, he got the spell off and I rolled higher than he did. And he got it off with overwhelming power, so he ends up miscasting six, which is really good for me. The results from the miscast is he ends up taking a wound. So, you know what he's doing? He's emulating scaz. And uh, I guess uh, mimicking someone is the highest form of flattery. I didn't know demons were into that, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I especially like that he wounded himself. During the shooting phase, his flamers torch and kill one of my trappers. Not enough for panic, but enough to in just incite my hatred. <laughs> We go into combat, and yeah, exactly like you thought, the slaughterers destroy Elf Eater and Shy Hammer before he can counterattack, which is actually kind of close because he did exactly three wounds. Three wounds got through. Uh, he rolled remarkably bad, uh, but it was enough to kill him. And uh, while that sucks, Elf Eater at least got one unit before he went down. Better than nothing. And then they just combat pivot like that to prepare for the counter charge that they know is coming. So with that over, we go over here to top of three after movement, and there's a little bit. 
Uh, I decide not to charge the slaughterer's headlong all by myself because I choose life. I, instead, I take Bow Wowser and I move him over. Yes, I know it's a flank charge. Yes, I know Bow Wowser's going to die. And yes, I'm okay with that because if he overruns, that's fine. The Conqueror should be able to hit him rather well, actually. More than likely in the front, but maybe by the time that's over, I'll have more guys situated to help me out with that. Uh, on the other side of the table, on the right side there, uh, the good old boys and the Tusker Cavs slam into the Pestilent Beasts. That could be a really good idea, or that could be a really bad idea. Those guys have regen, and I have no flaming attacks whatsoever. Uh, Lord Tremendous moves over to the very edge of the trees to shoot at the flamers. The trappers fall back uh, to let Lord Tremendous shoot at him, and to allow him to charge through there and slam into him. I know I'm taking dangerous terrains for doing it, but it'll be fun. Rufus moves up to take a pot shot at the flank of the slaughterers just to try to lower their numbers before I'm in inevitable combat with them. The bombardiers move to do the same. The scraplings and scaz both move to go after the greater demon. Just any wounds I can put on them are good wounds, and that's it for movement. There's been a picture of the good old boys and uh, thun or the Tusker Cavs slamming into the Pestilent Beasts. And that's going to be a fun combat. That's a lot of impact hits. But at the same time, it's a gamble because I don't know what's going to happen. The hope is that the good old boys are out of combat by the end of it at the end of the turn, and I'm able to overrun into the horrors. Because if I can get a hold of them, they'll rip those things apart. Uh, worst case scenario, though, I'm going to get eaten alive by those things. <laughs> we'll see what happens. No drama in this turn, shooting and magic were useless, so we go into combat, and I drop two of the Pestilent Beasts. Uh, they aren't able to do anything back to me, so I've got charge, two banners, six wounds, It's like and uh, a rank to nothing. Absolutely nothing. I win this combat by four million. He disintegrates due to his... Uh, what's it called, In instability or unstable rule. Uh, Crumbles kills the last two off. The good old boys overrun into the horrors, just barely clipping them. And the Tusker Cav pivot just slightly so they can charge the Flamers next turn. Or at the very minimum, get them to move their ass so they uh, <laughs> don't get charged. Either way, that's a hell of a victory. I'm very pleased. With that ugliness over, we go over here to bottom of three after movement. And as you probably already guessed, the slaughter is charging a bow wowser. It is a flank. They end up just like that, which is glorious. If they overrun, great. If they stay put, great. Either way, I should be able to counter charge and do some serious damage. Uh, his flamers turn to face the Tusker Cav like so, which I get. I just don't care. Uh, I'll, I'll charge him if I have to. Um, and that's really it. His greater demon moves over to the left flank to continue to harass Skaz. My opponent likes to kill Skaz. I get it. He's a killable model. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe he doesn't like rats. I could understand that. And, uh, that's it for movement. There's been a picture of his slaughter slamming in the bow wowser, and we all know how that's going to go. Real quick, fun fact. See the little tombstone marker in the forest there? My opponent, uh, I don't know if you've watched the last Battle Report or not, but my opponent has taken the time to make tombstone markers with all my characters' names on them and, when, and, and monsters. And so when they die, he puts a little tombstone where they die. <laughs> it's a nice little middle finger, but it makes me giggle, so I'll allow it. <laughs> During the magic phase, his greater demon gets one of those wonky spells off on the conquerors and kills one of the tribes and does three wounds and just flat out kills him, which sucks, but, uh, you know, it could have been a lot worse. He could have done it to Skaz, he could have done it to the, to the, well, something more or less substantial, but he did kill off a tribesman, weakening that unit, and with only eight models in the unit, there's not a whole lot of room for, for losses like that, but uh, I guess it was a good shot. And then he gets the other divination spell off on Skaz. I tried to stop this one, but he, like, rolled a 700 and I rolled a 3. So, yeah, I wasn't stopping that one. It hits Skaz, but it only does one wound. It was one where you roll off against your opponent and however much they beat you by is how much you, how many wounds you take. Skaz ended up taking a single wound from that. So he's half dead, but he's half alive. So depending on your outlook on life, this is either going well or I'm screwed.
Nothing happens in shooting, so we go into combat, and lo and behold, they're able to kill Bow Wowser. I think Bow Wowser's able to kill one slaughterer before he's taken down because I think they go at the same initiative, but in the end, this was inevitable. This was going to happen, and this is exactly what should have happened. Chaff secured. Then over here, I'm able to do, I think, seven wounds to the horrors. In return, I take one. Uh, not a huge big deal. I do win this combat by a decent amount. But my opponent rolls really well for his uh, crumble check, and I think only one more horror dies. I, of course, since I won this combat, reform everybody over so I can get all my attacks in. Uh, it's not ideal. I know that. Having... You know this i'm gonna kill the horrors next turn which is ideal but the good old boys will take another full turn minimum before they get back into this fight luckily for me things seem to be going pretty well but had i been more up against the wall this would actually hurt me more than they would help and uh yeah i guess i'm just lucking out that things are going well so here's top of four after movement and the gloves come off a little little bit lord tremendous on the right flank there charges into the flamers and i'm like yeah he could probably take them by himself so after i declared to charge lord tremendous i decided not to declare to charge with the uh, uh what's it called the uh, uh tusker cav instead i wheeled them a little bit so that they could kind of go towards uh what's it called the horrors, just in case I flub with the tribesmen or Sex Panther makes all his ward saves. I figure they charge into horrors and then overrun and possibly hit into the slaughterers because I charge with the conquerors and Rufus into the slaughterers. Rufus fails the slaughter, or I'm sorry, the uh, conquerors make it. Great and all, but I wish Rufus had made it in. It was a longer charge. I misjudged the distance, and that's completely my fault. Uh, my trappers come moving forward to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left as fast as they can. They failed the... Uh no, they didn't fail their, their uh, march test, so they, they start making their way over to the left just to get in there on his fight. Skaz retreats from the Greater Demon, but turns to face him so that I can try to hit him with some magic of my own. The Bombardiers uh, wheel in order to shoot at the Greater Demon. And the, what's it called? Scraplings, they just march, or I'm sorry, they don't march, they move forward because they... They don't have musicians, so they can't swift reform. There's no reason to reform, because where they were at, they would have just made it so that the bombardiers were going to have to shoot over him. Not that it matters, because he's a, a towering presence, but you know what I mean. Uh, they just moved to get out of the way, and uh, yeah, the conqueror slammed into the slaughters. That's it for movement. There's a better picture of Lord Tremendous slamming into the flamers, and uh, hopefully that's a quick fight. And there's a better picture of the Conqueror slamming into the Slaughterers. And again, let's hope that that's a quick fight because I win. <laughs> during the magic phase, everything is either stopped or ward saved. Uh, during the shooting phase, nothing gets through. The Bombardiers actually do really well. My opponent just did better with his saves. So we go into combat and Lord Tremendous actually does, I think, five wounds five wounds to this unit three to five wounds i can't remember exactly how many in return he takes one for his trouble uh we screw up at this point and realize no he only did two wounds two or three wounds something like that and uh, but we screw up and we realize we didn't I, I remembered after the battle that uh his flamers have two wounds each so he ends up putting the guy back in a second so the charge and a flank and a couple of wounds or whatever, he rolls his check, uh, puts another wound on a guy, which uh, takes two more wounds or something like that, which kills the second and uh, puts a wound on another. But they stand there. He fails his check to turn and face me, so I'm still in his flank. They're not gone, but they're on their way out. And that's good. Lord Tremendous is going to kill a unit before it kills him for a change, which is glorious. In this combat over here, though, the good old boys and uh, Black Shade are able to finish off the remaining uh, horrors. There, there was just nothing left. They all went back to hell right where they belong. Afterwards, I reform them like this in order to try to get over to the slaughters because I honestly don't know if the Conquerors are going to be able to take them or not. Turns out that my fears were a little unfounded, though. Rufus had, he ended up failing his charge, but he moved up six inches and ended up being just close enough to the, actually he was about five inches or so away from the uh, slaughters, which lowered their initiative, which means I got to attack first, which was glorious because Rufus takes him down by three, the Yeti first take him down by one, I believe they were initiative one, which makes my tribesmen and my BSB much faster than they are. I end up killing four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of their guys. 
uh, to his. He ends up doing like eight wounds. No, three, six, seven, I think eight wounds to me, seven or eight wounds to me, uh, which isn't terrible, but I have a charge, a banner, BSB. He has uh, six, seven, eight wounds, a rank, and a banner, and a BSB, I believe, and probably the war standard. So it's pretty close call. I think if anything, uh, I win by one or we're tied. It's a very close combat, but we end up sticking. So either way, this is where we'll be in combat next turn. And speaking of next turn, here's bottom of four after movement. Yay! Uh, not a ton of movement. Most of his stuff is dead or in combat. Not being a dick, just being honest. Uh, his greater demon shoots up forward to fire away at Skaz and the Bombardiers. And I think maybe offers leadership to the Slaughterers. And that's it. Uh, he's got his Flamers in combat over on the right side. And yeah, there's nothing else worth that he can move. So that's it for movement. During his magic phase, he gets that unerring strike spell off. The big one, like 3D6, right up your nose. Wounds with no regen, no ward save, and... Gets it off on Rufus. I tried to stop it. It still went off. And he does exactly six wounds. Well, I'm sorry. Exactly six wounds get through. I still got my armor save. But it wasn't enough. Rufus collapses. And that sucks. I hate it when Rufus dies, especially like that. But I got to give credit where it's due. That was very well played by my opponent. Uh, nothing happens in shooting, and nothing else happens in magic, so we go into combat, and it's not a very brutal combat this time. Uh, we end up in a challenge, my BSB versus his BSB. He did not challenge in the last turn, and neither did I. Uh, I don't think I do anything to his BSB. <laughs> I take two wounds. In return, I lose, I think totally did five wounds to me. I did four to him, four or five. I can't remember exactly. Bottom line is we end up either stalemating or I lose combat and I stick. But yeah, yeah, I, I need backup in this unit fast or I'm going to lose. <laughs> That's a lot of points. Hopefully they can pull it off. We'll see. Over here, Lord Tremendous does three wounds again, I believe, to the Flamers. In return, I don't take anything. So three wounds to a flank. I win by four. My opponent rolls his un unstable check, Demonic Instability, and rolls like an 11. The entire unit vaporizes, and Lord Tremendous stays exactly where he's at because he's just going to march next turn. It doesn't matter. But uh, very pleased that he was able to get rid of those guys as fast as he did. With combat over, we go over here to top of five after movement. And there's some. Uh, the good old boys and the Tusker Cav come charging around a the hill there as fast as they can. Obviously, the good old boys can't charge this turn because I reformed with them last turn. But they're on their way. And while I don't know if the Conquerors are going to be there next turn, at least the good old boys will be able to counter charge. Possibly with the Bombardiers. Possibly with the Tusker Cav. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Lord Tremendous moves up eight. Uh, he only moved up eight so he could shoot at the Greater Demon. Skaz gets the hell out of the charge arc of the Greater Demon because I don't want that fight. Uh, the Scraplings, they just reform because they can't do anything else. My uh, Trappers move forward a little bit, and the Bombardiers stay exactly where they're at to shoot at the Greater Demon. That's it for movement. Nothing of note happens in magic or in shooting, so we go straight into combat, and it really goes in my favor. He only did one wound to me, and uh, I lost a tribesman, sure, but in return, I kill four of his guys, and Khan just blows it out of the park, and... and kills the BSB. Just like five hits, five wounds, a couple more lethal, and like four got through, uh, killing his BSB just flat out. So I got like eight wounds and a banner, a banner and a BSB to his one wound banner. Uh, so I'm winning by like six. He rolls his instability and he ends up rolling boxcars. Uh, BSB's gone. He can't re-roll it. It does like nine wounds to the unit and the unit vaporizes. It was uh, an incredible turn of events. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. I was very, very proud of the Conquerors. They did amazing. I know it was lucky dice rolls and I'll take it. Like I said a million times, better lucky than good. But holy crap. Uh, yeah, the Conquerors took the Slaughters in single combat, and I'm very proud of the guys. In the end, I just kind of pivot them like this, and the idea here was so that the uh, good old boys uh, could, could charge through and possibly hit his greater demon if I was feeling froggy. Solid combat. I was very pleased. 
So here we are in the bottom of five after movement. And like I said, just like last time, there's not a whole lot. His greater demon shifts to look over at the good old boys, because I believe that's the only unit he's afraid of. And the way he sees it, probably, if the bombardiers and the scraplings want to charge him in the flanks, they're more than welcome to. <laughs> they don't want to, just in case you were curious. Uh, but yeah, that's it for movement. During the magic phase, he gets that unerring strike, the big one off again on the Conquerors, and he kills off the rest of the Conquerors. I think he does another wound or so to my con, but uh, he lives. It just sucks that the unit that did so well against the Slaughterers got vaped. I did try to stop this spell, and I failed, obviously. There's a better picture. Uh, he does pass his panic check and everything like that, but uh, you know what? Maybe he didn't do a wound with that last one. Maybe he gets another spell off on my con and does one more wound to him. That se that sounds more right to me. Uh, so my con's probably not going to survive this battle, <laughs> but he's hanging on by a thread. The dude's nothing else if not a true champion, you know? So we go over here to top of six after movement. There's really no movement other than my Khan moving into the forest. Uh, his greater team was just close enough that I had to take a leadership check in order to march, and I failed it twice. <laughs> so he goes into the forest as fast as he can. Um, other than that, I don't think I try to charge him with uh, with the good old boys or anything, because I know he'd just issue a challenge and probably get the mulching black shade. So everything just kind of moves up to shoot at him, man. That's it. <laughs> I'm either going to shoot him down or he's going to survive this game. There's really nothing else I had planned. And uh, just long story short, magic and shooting. I get a bunch of magic off. I get a bunch of shooting off. And he saves, like, everything. He doesn't take any more wounds. It was really discouraging. But it's a greater demon. What did I expect? So with that all over, we go over here to bottom of six after movement. My opponent doesn't move either. There's no reason. He wants to kill off Khan, and I don't blame him. Uh, we go into magic, and nothing happens. I'm able to stop his magic before it can go off, and the one spell that he does get off is the one where you roll off, and I rolled higher than he is. And that's it. Nothing else happens this turn. So there it is, boys and girls. There's the end of the game. I know it's anticlimactic as hell, but hey, it was a good game. And uh, in the end, the Greater Demon survived, which is probably about right. I really don't have an answer for the Greater Demon, especially when he's making his saves like crazy. Uh, but for the most part, my army survived. Uh, the Conquerors died, a couple of uh, my monsters died, but uh, I won this game, and I was pretty happy with the outcome. Demons is not an easy army to face off against, especially for, well, anybody, but not even for ogres, and uh, I did well in this game. I'm very pleased. Uh, but you know what? We'll get to the recap right, blah, right now, because this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So in the end, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I ended up getting 3,590 points out of him. He got 1,684 out of me for a difference of 1,906. So it was a pretty significant victory for the Ogres. I ended up losing half points for my Khan. I lost my Conquerors. I lost, ba lost Bow Wowser. Uh, Elf Eater and Rufus also perished, which sucks. But... You know, you gotta break some eggs. And I have a crazy feeling that they're gonna be recovered by my next game. So, Divination is the son of a gun. I mean, those spells can put out some serious, serious damage, and since I don't have a lot of high saves, it's gonna do some serious damage to me if, uh, if I can't stop the spell before it casts. So, I'm gonna have to focus on casters a lot harder, I think, especially at the tournament. Uh, Elf Eater, I need to position him better. I. Putting him over on the left flank to hold it down seemed like a good idea, but with my opponent committing his greater demon and those flyers over there, he was outmatched, especially after that first spell. Uh, Bombardiers aren't great, but they're not terrible. They did a lot more damage than I showcased in this game. It's just my opponent was making a lot of his saves, so... Maybe I just like the models, maybe I just like the paint job, maybe it's a combination of the two. Uh, maybe they actually are good, I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of the three. But I'm starting to starting to see the light with Bombardiers. We'll see what happens as time goes on. Uh, speaking of seeing the light, that Wrath of the God spell is stupid. <laughs> oh, the fact that it killed off his caster was glorious. But my opponent stopped that spell 
every single time after that. He was letting other spells go through and then making his saves. So it was something else, but man, I hope I get that spell much in most of my games, if not all. Uh, it was cool to see a new Demon uh, Legion list, to say the least. I was kind of used to seeing the Wrath, and uh, not that I mind that. I like being able to cut my teeth on rock-solid lists, but it was neat to have a different flavor of Demon to fight. Uh, I think I've got uh, Demons figured out for the most part. Not fully, God knows, but I'm, I'm feeling more comfortable in engaging them. Although I was still terrified to engage a Demon General in close combat, even with my tooled up combat character. Ah, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll get ballsy at the Adepticon. <laughs> This was a fantastic game. This was a, a really fantastic opponent. I really enjoy fighting against Sex Panther. And uh, speaking of which, thank you for all your help, man, and getting me ready for your Adepticon. You got me as good as I'm going to get, and I really do appreciate all the games you, you, you played with me in order to uh, get me to the point that I'm at. And as always, I'm very much looking forward to our, our rematch. Alright guys, this is part of the battle report where I get to take a moment and thank everybody that supports me financially through Patreon, PayPal, and other means. I've got a lot of supporters and I'm grateful for all of them, but most of them want to remain anonymous. These are the individuals that will allow me to thank them properly on my channel and I will take this moment to do so. Alex of the Vale Renegades, South Florida's Gamermancy team, Daniel Jolson, and Caillou Choi. Thank you guys all very, very much. I appreciate your donations, and I hope I continue to be worthy of them as time goes on. Who knows, maybe I'll do well at uh, Adepticon and you won't feel like you're throwing your money away. <laughs> but seriously guys, thanks. But that's going to do it, guys. Battle report number 63 is officially in the history books. I've got one more battle report to do before I start putting out Adepticon content. And uh, that's going to be awesome. My next battle is a really good one. It's against my team tournament opponent, his 4,500 point list. So, yeah, yeah, expect to get your socks rocked for that one. <laughs> As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But yeah, guys, thanks.